Ooh, there are a lot of storylines coming out of the Giants 25 to 22 preseason win over the Bengals on Sunday night. So let's bring in New York Post Giants beat writer Paul Schwartz for a recap. And he's going to give us some updates on all things Big Blue. Paul, let's get right into it because the number one storyline involves the number five overall pick of the draft, Kayvon Thibodeau. He left the game early with a knee injury. So please update the Giants fans on what is his latest on his status. Hey, Brandon. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get out of these preseason games, right? And you're watching a game, some prominent player goes down to kind of cast a shadow over the rest of the evening. Uh, the Giants, uh, after the game, initially thought that they had dodged a bullet. In fact, on Monday morning, they found out they did. Kayvon Thibodeau has a sprained MCL. That's a medial collateral ligament. It sounds bad. It's not great, but it's way better than um, ACL. Obviously, his ACL is intact. His meniscus is intact. So this is a classic knee sprain, three to four weeks. The NFL regular season opener for the Giants is in 20 days. So that puts right up against it as far as will he be ready for the regular season or not. Um, now, that's tough for a rookie. You want him to get as many reps in practice and in the preseason as he can. But given what happened when he went down and was laying there on the field and MetLife Stadium was in hushed silence, uh, this is a dodge the bullet sort of a best case scenario. There's no major damage and he'll be back sooner rather than later. Absolutely, because Kayvon's been having a pretty strong camp to start his NFL career. So who's next? Are there any contingency plans uh, to who has to step up and uh, step in Kayvon's place? Well, thank goodness Aziz Ojolari is back, right? He missed a lot of three weeks of um, training camp with a hamstring issue. In 10 snaps, Brandon, Aziz Ojolari forced two holding penalties, okay? So the Giants feel it can be a difference maker. So that's on one side. On the other side where Kayvon usually plays, look, oh, Shane Zimenez, come on down, right? Uh, he was, he's a former third-round pick of the Giants. Uh, he had a really good rookie year, I think four and a half sacks, and then just did not mesh with the Joe Judge coaching staff. He uh, is still on the roster. I think he's had a decent summer, so he will certainly get a chance to fill in for that role. And uh, Quincy Roche, second-year player, uh, was on the practice squad last year. I kind of like him. I think he shows flashes. He's not Kayvon Thibodeau, but I think maybe he can hold the fort. It's too bad Ellison Smith is hurt. Uh, he came out of the locker room. He didn't even play in the game. He's wearing a walking boot on his right foot, so I don't expect him back anytime soon. So, um, look, they'd rather have Kayvon Thibodeau out there, but maybe for one game uh, they should be able to get by. Let's talk about quarterback Daniel Jones. He put together another, another solid night. In your opinion, is he where he needs to be in terms of comfortability within this new offense, or do you need to see more? Well, I don't think we're going to see more in the preseason. I'd be surprised if he plays in the third preseason game. I know it's against the Jets. I know it's for bragging rights. But, look, you've seen, Brandon, these guys are going down left and right. I think Brian Dable has had enough of that. I think he's good. Look, Saquon Barkley didn't play in the second preseason game. Uh, Daniel Jones looked good in – the second preseason game against the Bengals. 14 of 16, one interception was not his fault. He threw a pass that the rookie tight end Daniel Bellinger should have caught, and he did not. Deflection up in the middle of the field, as you know, as a former wide receiver, very bad, right? Very bad for the yep. offense. Yep. Uh, so, look, is he where he needs to be? Probably not. It's a new offense. They keep on saying Dable, Jones, uh, Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, it's a process, and it is a process. So will they will they be where they need to be on September 11th for the opener? Probably not, but you are where you are. Uh, you can only uh, do so much in the time you're allotted. So I think we've seen enough of Daniel Jones in the preseason. Uh, he'll still practice hard. They have a joint practice against the Jets coming up this week. Um, but he made progress in this game, and that's important. Yeah, and luckily they do have this joint practice coming up because you can control these reps. You can have – I would like to see him throw the, the ball down the field more. He's doing all the things he's supposed to do. He looks comfortable. Now it's taking that last, uh, that last step and getting the ball down the field to his playmakers. Let's talk about this offensive line because they've been banged up what feels like all of training camp. But, Paul, they put together two solid, two strong preseason performances – when they get some of these guys back healthy, can we look at this unit as a strength on this Giants offense? Well, 54 pass attempts against the Bengals, one sack allowed, right? Pretty good. Uh, don't forget, that's with Max Garcia, a veteran, but a guy who was the sixth 
center on the depth chart. I'm not even sure the depth chart goes that deep, Brandon, <laughs> but he was, he, you know, it's like your next man up because five other centers have been hurt. He did not have any quarterback center exchange issues. Uh, so I think that the key to this offensive line and what I've liked so far is first of all, look, the young tackles are terrific. Andrew Thomas is terrific. They've been kind of keeping him on a pitch count. Uh, Evan Neal, you know, these reports that he's having a bad summer, not where I see, not where I sit. Uh, he's terrific. He just moves people out of the way in the run game. Uh, he has some maybe technical issues in the pass game as far as being a pass blocker. He's just so big and massive. Uh, he's smart. And I think that's the key to this offensive line. Right now, it is light years ahead of last year's line as far as intellect, being able to pass things off one another. Look, if you get beat on a play, you get beat on a play. But too often in the past few years, we've seen offensive linemen just look confused. Um, oh, did I have him? Did you have him? They're looking from side to side. There's a free runner. That has not happened much this summer. And that's a very good thing. It shows that they have brought in smart players, uh, some veteran guys. I think Mark Lewinsky does a good job inside. Uh, the Giants need to get John Feliciano back. They're starting center. But, but you can tell they are well coached. They are expecting what they are seeing up front and they're dealing with it. And that is a step forward for this offensive line. Yeah, and that just goes to show that offensive line coach Bobby Johnson has done a great job being able to plug and play and mix and match different guys, different lineups, and still get some sort of production uh, out of this unit. Paul, as always, thanks for joining us, my man. Dark Brandon, thanks.